Hi guys, it's me again. And I wanted to just finish my, my little series that I'm doing. I'm walking up the same hill that I walked up yesterday. Uh, today, I had to take a different route because the train that I was taking, unfortunately, wasn't working. So I had to take a different train at the same station and the thing is at this station that I get off has seven flights of stairs with no elevator truth be told it's 149th and Grand Concourse in the Bronx so you know some gentlemen offered to help now as you can see I'm going on the incline pushing the baby um, I occasionally smoke a cigarette, maybe once a day, once is too much, so, no, 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 it's okay, excuse me, guys, what did your mother, I mean, your man say about guy, oh, God, it's a shame, I know what it's like. I know what it's like to be homeless or just pass someone's going through some stuff, but there are some good people out there that still care. So, um, anyway, so as I said, I was going up about five, including the train station initially. That's how many flights it says. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven flights upstairs. No lie. You can Google it if you don't believe me. Um, so, you know, like I said, some gentlemen offered to help me. But I decline on most of it sometimes. They take it upon themselves to do it. But I don't, you know, sometimes I just let them do it because they feel like helping. So, this is like an exercise for me. And then I run all the way there because they close it too. Um, this is part of my sobriety. I'm in a program. I've been in a program for um, almost eight years, and I haven't used um, I haven't used heroin since. Truth be told, uh, the cocaine took a little longer than that. Truth be told, that I've been clean for for at least five years. Um, for some reason, <coughs> that you know, I didn't smoke it anymore. I, I did do that for a long time. Absolutely, I'm not gonna lie. But I, I was, uh, unfortunately I was doing it another way. And um, it wasn't sniffing, I don't need to say anything else. It wasn't smoking, it wasn't sniffing. Um, I stopped doing that. I stopped doing everything. I don't drink, like I said. I smoke a cigarette once a day, maybe two depending and I do not smoke during the day for some reason I like to smoke at night and I do not inhale I know like Bill Clinton I never inhale but I really don't I just for some reason I like the smell it reminds me of my dad my dad was an avid smoker my grandmother you know my whole family so for some reason when I smell the cigarette it's like nostalgic for me my baby so peacefully watching the show and um, it's just that way it's not like really that I like the the taste of it it's really just the smell so anyway it's getting a little chilly out and I'm enjoying the weather I hope everyone else is enjoying their fall Thanksgiving is coming soon. I hope everyone has a blessed and safe Thanksgiving. Um, but God is good and I'm just so grateful for everything that God is doing for me. I really am. God is doing a lot for me. Just waking up in the morning, look. The way I look at it, a blessing to me is having a roof over your head. 
your children's head, having food to eat, and being without being at peace within yourself and coming to terms with whatever demons because everybody has demons I mean if someone says that they never been through something you know it's very very far and few between I'm sure there are those rare occasions where there's a family that's just so not perfect but they really have minimal problems um, there are those families and God bless them you know, I'm not saying I don't come from a good family. I do in a lot of ways, unfortunately. You know, back in the 80s when my grandparents were alive, when we were young, everybody was very close, tight-knit. You know, it was like every Sunday was sauce and pasta, and we grandma would come over, or my mother's mother, nanny, my grandfather. Um... You know, we would have big Italian dinners, and excuse me, it was beautiful. Yeah, it was a beautiful dinner. thing, and I miss those days. And it just seems like after my first grandmother died, uh, Josephine Justino, after she passed away, a lot of the family unity went to hell. And then, especially after Grandma Grandma Gloria passed away. Forget about it. Everybody just pretty much went the separate ways in, in some perspective, you know, or it just seems that way. And plus, like I said, um, my dad rescued me, me and my sister Dee Dee, from being molested for years by our cousin on my mother's side. He was older than us. Um, but getting past that, that kind of put a damper in the family unity, too, because then there was a lot of bad blood. But uh, it needed to come out, you know, it needed to come out. Things like that shouldn't be hushed up. So um, after that, um, I went to live with my mom. And right now, I'm not going to get into exactly what happened, but it wasn't very good. And it hurts me to this day what happened. I, I forgive the situation, but it's something that I have to live with every day because the situation, um, it didn't get rectified as far as like, you know, the person is just still like there, like nothing happened. I have to face them. Um, the person, like nothing happened, put on my game face. And I don't like being phony, but the truth is the truth. This happened. And it breaks my heart that it did. And uh, I'll leave you, you know, to come to your own conclusions. One day I will document what happened. But right now I do not want to say any names. There's just a time period from when I was 12 till I was 16 years old. And in between that, my stepmother was very, very mean to me and my sister, especially me because I look like my mom. Uh, she would do very mean things to me. She was a good person in some ways. I'm not saying no because I'd be a liar. Um, when she would get drunk, she was much, much nicer to us. She was a happy drunk. Um, she was a very loving drunk. But unfortunately, when she didn't drink, she was very, very, very cold and very mean. Very cold and very mean. Um, and then, you know, when I met my ex, um, it was like he would became my father also pretty much got the situation under control as far as um, bringing it to the authorities. But as far as like family wise, like on other people's behalf, it did not. And it still remains pretty much the same to this day in some perspective but my father again when I was 12 till I was 16 came to my rescue and uh, he helped he helped me out and uh, he definitely made sure the person you know got in trouble for what they did so there's that um, do I hate the person no am I hurt yes who wouldn't be um, do I feel uncomfortable when I have to face this person? 
absolutely, who wouldn't? Uh, like I said, but I pray, you know, the thing is, I don't have any hatred in my heart for any of the people that abused me. I don't. I'm hurt that they did this to me and took advantage of me, but I do not hate them. I pray for them. I don't have hate in my heart for anybody, even the man that slashed my back. I have no... Hi, Lidio! Look at my Lidio! Hi, Wee Wee! That's my Lidio! Say hi, Lidio! Hi, Lidio! But yeah, I have no hate or animosity for them. Just really, I wish the person would come clean and admit what they did. And maybe things would be able to move on as far as that. And not that they haven't, because when I go to my mother's house, it's like, you know, everyone just that knows the situation has to just pretend that this did not happen. And that's, you know, that's really hard to do. But, uh, you know, it is 